I think all artists are always in dialogue with their work. They're always thinking about what they've done. They're always thinking about what they're going to do. He is, I think, that uh, rare phenomena in art. He's an idealist and a spiritual artist, really. He's concerned with articulating a certain kind of consciousness, and that's the important thing of art. My approach to my work is, of course, emotional. It can't help but be, but it's not entirely intellectual because in order for it to be intellectual, I would have to know what I was going to do. And I never know what I'm going to do. So one could say it's all emotional. I react to what I do. What he does with every painting is what everyone, every artist should do with a painting. He enters into a conversation with it. His paintings are never monologues. It's not Hector preaching. It's not Hector saying, this is what I think. It's Hector looking at the painting and saying, what do you think? What do you want? What do you need? And he listens to the painting. I put a mark on a canvas, a color, and I put another color on it, and I intellectually make a decision. But I think it's based mostly on, do I think it works? Do I think it's beautiful? Do I think it's forceful? Whatever I'm searching for, which is never predetermined. That all comes out of the painting. There's a difference in thinking about your work. There's a difference in strategizing about your work, trying to understand it and being in a really intense visual dialogue where the only thing you're concerned with is the, the new relationships, the new discoveries that the work itself is telling you. There was a time when I would decide what the painting was going to be and then do it. Doesn't make much sense to me now because that means performance and performance I feel is deadly. I'm not interested in performance. I'm interested in discovery and the excitement of discovery. You know, Mondrian, one of the great early abstract painters from Holland, used to say, it's all intuition. It may look like it's predetermined or calculated, but it's not. My eye tells me where everything goes. And if I have to go into a state of Sturm und Drang, which means storm and stress, <laughs> literally, uh, over where that eighth of an inch is going to go, I will go into that state until it's resolved. I'm thick-headed and stubborn, so that if a painting doesn't seem to be doing what I think it should be doing, we have a fight. And I'm going to stick there until I win. That's all there is to it. So that's the sign of an authentic artist. He has his vision, and that's important for me, whatever medium you're working in, he has his vision. It's a complicated vision of abstraction integrated with certain, shall we say, naturalistic, I would say subliminal naturalistic imagery, and of course he has a theme. One of the things that has always astonished me about Hector and has, for me, been a personal inspiration is how uh, prolific he is. He's always working. Every day, he would, he would go to the studio on 6th Avenue, and he would paint. And if he didn't paint, he would sit and think about painting. But he would go there every single day, and his goal was to create something. And that was very inspiring to me. Every minute that he isn't in his studio, uh, for him, is a, a lost minute. And that's true today, certainly. Uh, since he's in his studio virtually seven days a week, pretty much if there's light, he's there. He's dogged. He sticks with it. And I think he does it because he loves it. I think 
he never feels more alive than when he's making a painting. Every painting is a little different. Uh, there are so many parameters that he's working with, that he's juggling. I mean, that's part of the art. I mean, it's like a composer with notes, okay? Uh, I mean, Mozart or Beethoven or Franz Liszt, whoever. I mean, we're talking about a vocabulary of notations. And Hector Leonardi has a vocabulary of notations. He is working in time, through time, with time. And he's projecting a sense of magnificent light through color. Hector is one of the few painters today that has been actively using color as the fundamental carrier of a message. He started out, at least the early paintings that I've seen show, you know, heavy influence, I would say, from Joseph Albers, who was his teacher at Yale. Albers denaturalized color. Leonardi assimilates the idea of color, but, uh, shall we say, rebel rebels against it, goes somewhere else, and uh, I think very importantly, uh, shall we say, renaturalizes color. Having had this experience of working and studying with Joseph Albers at Yale, he was really steeped in what still is the basic vocabulary we use to describe color. But what makes him a brilliant colorist is not that he has an impressionist's notion of how colors are on some level fundamentally related. It's more spontaneous than that. And it allows him to take remarkable chances with his color. And this is a, what I think is the most exciting about him as a painter. He understands the quality of the color and light in a way that is significant because it's, for him, a completely tactile experience and an optical experience. He's not working at it from the point of view of a kind of calculation. That's not Leonardo. I guess the first thing that I took away from working with Hector was there's in color there is no condemnation. Every color was perfect, every color was beautiful, it was just proportion and um, adjacency. When I'm evaluating color, it's never the color in itself because I love all color. There's, there isn't a color I don't like, but it's the color in relation to another color and its psychic defect and the edge between the two, whether it is this, whether it's that, whether it's this, all of those things which determine form and connected determine a kind of color. I would place Leonardi conceptually and aesthetically somewhere between Albers' completely pure color and Motherwell's idea that there's no such thing as a pure color, there's red wine, there's a red sunset. So Motherwell always thought uh, uh, colors as charged with emotion, even though he recognized their purely aesthetic effect. He's one of these colorists, like the late 19th century pointillist, for example, an impressionist, who is very focused on the idea of bringing color into light. So if I think about Hector as, as a colorist, I have to think about him as someone like Seurat, who had an incredible knowledge of how colors, when they went together, did remarkable things. And again, if we go back to the Impressionists, yeah, I would think of him as maybe somebody like Bonnard, not the standard Impressionist like Monet, but Bonnard, who was also a painter who took remarkable chances in the colors he used. When Hector found color, he found what he wanted to do in painting. It really became a religion for him. Hector is almost unmatchable in terms of his understanding of color and his ability to teach it. You know, one of his claims to fame, and it's really a claim to fame, was that he did a lot of these famous Joseph Albers color studies and things. I taught his color theory course and was an assistant in that course with him. And then I taught it at University of Bridgeport and then Parsons School of Design for 20 years. And he was absolutely astounding. 
One of the earliest things Hector said to us in class was, there is no bad color, it's just what you do with it. Albers encouraged nothing. He just criticized what you did. He just encouraged you. And I think perhaps I've taken that key in my own teaching to find that spot where the student is without philosophizing, without trying to push them up somewhere, but find that spot and give them a little push to the next spot. My job as a teacher was not to show them what I could do, but to help them achieve what they were trying to do. That's my job. Leonardi, he has a unique touch, and um, Rosenberg introduced this term signature painting, and it's stuck, and he has his signature. You look at it, Leonardi, you say, ah, that's a Leonardi. He moved at some point in the late 1970s, or early 1980s, into a very different way of painting that had to do with almost like a collage technique where he would use uh, acrylic paint to build up the surfaces of the canvas. It was a, an accident, but as I've said so many times, if it's an accident and you don't notice it, it remains an accident. But if it's something you see as a possibility, which I saw there, and I looked at this after the nervous habit of peeling, I thought to myself, that's already a painting. When I found this skin and it said to me, this is what I want to do, I was aware of that fact and therefore it made perfect sense, and I used it because it was what the material wanted to do. It's a very complicated, kind of multi-dimensional, multi-meaningful, layered effect that his work has, and I think that gives it a very sort of subtle resonance somewhere between the lyric and the epic. We see a kind of a kind of relief, in fact, if we look very closely. You wouldn't see that at a distance. When I first looked at the paintings, I was very surprised. When I got close, it was something very different than what I had thought I was seeing. He would gouge and inscribe it. He would do a sort of radical sculpting of the surface of the canvas to such a degree that I think in, in some cases we have to think about his painting as really as kind of sculpting with color. I had never seen color concretized into a material and then applied in such a way that this thick paint turned into a marvelous bit of atmosphere. To me it gave the surface a kind of richness and a kind of depth of color that I wasn't able to achieve exactly that way with oil paint and therefore I assumed that it was a natural use of the material, and that got me going with it. He would take these, these bits of acrylic paint and he would put layer upon layer of paint and allow it to dry. And then when it became a material that he could extract from the surface, he would then pull it up and cut it or break it into bits and pieces. And he had this surface, this table that was just covered with all of these bits of color. It was like confetti. after I made the paint film, and this is maybe as many coats of paint as there are colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors make this paint swatch. So it can be now lifted off this non-porous surface and brought to the canvas and used. So I go over here and I see. Obviously it would link with this very well. Perfect. See? They, all of the, the articulation, all of it which is accidental, becomes positive and works in the painting. So he's creating a new technique in a sense because this is not something that's normative in terms of a painterly style, even in an abstract painting. So it's quite a remarkable invention on his part. There is a certain relation to uh, to Monet in Leonardi with more, shall we say, modernist techniques such as collage. So it makes his work extremely interesting, this sort of hooking up with, shall we say, an earlier modernist history 
and a later modernist history, and at the same time assimilating the absolutist idea of art and purity that uh, uh, Albers had, but going somewhere else with it. There's been a lot of experimentation with structure, with stripes, and with creating sort of a foreground and background, creating even armature within the painting itself, in which all that light and color is explored. It's the availability for change that is so wonderful about this method. Because with a brush stroke, you put paint on a canvas, it's there. You have two choices, remove it or paint over it. Here I have many, many choices. Can use it, change its position, tear it, double it, move it around till I find the best spot for it. Things start to open up in those surfaces of his paintings. Like there are eruptions, you know, where you have a flat surface and all of a sudden you have this glob opening up and it's tremendously exciting because when you look back, you see what's coming. You know, you see that a door has been opened up and he's walked through it. I think they've gone way beyond paintings. I mean, they are made of paint. But maybe they aren't paintings. I think they're sculpture, they're montage, they are collage, they are, they're all those things. Hector's painting, I think, is definitely catalytic. It's something which uh, reveals itself through a series of subliminal recognitions that it sets off in the mind. And the beauty of that is that those are the kinds of things that you can't get any other way. I make it for myself, and I'm aware of the fact that it doesn't come into another kind of being and another kind of life until someone else sees it and converses with it and reacts to it. Then it has a life which I think is a very important life. In the beginning of abstraction itself, there was two words that Kandinsky, he figured throughout, sensibility and idiosyncrasy. Uh, important, this sort of personal dimension to it, and sensibility, the senses. So his art appeals to the senses visually, and you get a haptic feel from the surface, the touch, and at the same time, this very complicated visual sensation. Albus had an astonishing influence on me because he taught me to see. I always thought, prior to my experience there, that painting was just about doing, putting paint on canvas. I didn't know that what is on the canvas isn't exactly it, that you should see what's on the canvas, not what you think is there, and to see how things interact. That was what he taught me, which was one of the biggest lessons of my life. What Leonardi got from Albers is a quality of restraint that allowed him to channel configurations by way of the point or the pour or the drip into something that was magnificently subtle and in its own way very intense in terms of its delivery of feeling. There's an understanding that I think he has of how people look at things naively, how people look at things in a more sophisticated way, and I think he understands all the layers of visual perception in a very broad and, and sensible way. And I think that has really made a lot of his painting accessible to people without it being unsophisticated. It's work that you can apprehend immediately upon the first encounter, but is also something that can withstand prolonged viewing, that reveals all of its various aspects only under prolonged viewing. To go to that place and be as um, unguarded as he has to be, to reveal himself in his art that way, I think he's very vulnerable. And that's part of the beauty of, of Hector's work. It's the vulnerable love that you read in it and that you would feel when you live with his work. Every time I re-encounter one of these paintings, I have a different reaction. In fact, I remember I was in Hector's studio and I walked up to a painting and I said, Hector, that's a new painting, that's marvelous. He said, you say that every time you see it. 
<laughs> He's not interested in dualities. He's interested in a sense of wholeness where things come together. And when they do, that's the magnificent part of what he does as a painter. I look at it, I can't think what I could possibly do to make it any better than it is, and I go on to another one. And it can be, in terms of color, opposite of what I'm doing. If I'm working on a red painting, I might go to a blue painting. If I'm working on a fully saturated palette, I might go to a very pale palette or a very dark palette, so that I'm in new territory, and that helps me be, continue to be stimulated. I don't know where he's going to go next. That's exactly what you wake up every morning hoping to discover. And I think he's one of those lucky artists who, in a way, are never blocked. He occupies a, a very special place, if for no other reason, because he's continued to put it out there uh, through all these years. Painting gives me everything I need. It gives me the greatest pleasure. It's a very, very selfish motive because I haven't found outside of personal relationships anything as gratifying as painting. I think he's a marvelous painter and I think that we have to pay attention to him. It will take time, but then again, good art always takes time. I admire what he does. Uh, it's a connoisseur's art, basically, as I think the best abstraction is. Hector Leonardi is an embodiment of knowledge. I think that's what he is trying to transmit through his art. And that's what we all need to know and all need to feel, because why do we look at paintings? To obtain a sense of consciousness, of the world that we live in, of who we are, and to augment our feelings and bring them to a state of refinement so that we communicate better with one another as human beings in the world.